the Lugano Pickers United Church members and all other friends who watch this online church, welcome. Welcome to join with me to worship today. No matter how and when you engage with this worship resource, I hope you may enjoy it and experience of the presence of God in you. Today is Palm Sunday and begins Holy Week leading up to Easter. Holy Week is the week when Christians particularly remember the last week of Jesus' life. So as we worship today, my prayer is that we may remember the teaching and ministry of Jesus that impacted the people and we may also learn something from today's theme, forgiveness. So, let us begin our service by prayer. God, our hope, today we remember that when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, the people shouted Hosanna and proclaimed him as king. Lord, help us to honor him every day, choose him as our leader, and follow him in the way that leads to new life. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. These are our, our announcements for online church. Every week we will be uploading a new video, sermon and worship resource. It's being improved every week in terms of the contents and the quality of video. If you don't have internet access, the pastoral care team leader will organise a paper copy to be delivered to your home. If you need any assistance or have concerns, please talk with your pastoral care team leader or contact 9153-9694 or 9153-8653. If you have a prayer point for the church community to pray, please let your pastoral care team leader Know that so that you can be included in our weekly worship resource. Offerings whilst at home. If you're a regular giver to Lugano Pickers Uniting Church, we encourage you to continue during this time. There are a few different ways to give electronically. The easiest way is to give your weekly offering electronically and you can find more details on direct debit options on our website and church newsletter. By envelopes or cash, if you prefer to give using envelopes or cash, please place offerings each week in either planned giving envelopes or a plain envelope and keep until it is safe to, co to collect or to bring to church. If you have any questions at all, please call the Treasurer, Richard Hanna. His phone number and details are on your news sheet. Lagana Pucas Uniting Church is most grateful for your offerings over this difficult time in our lives and for our church. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9 7. Natalie is for the kids program, Natalie is going to provide a kids lesson activity resource for our children by email. If you want to receive it, please contact her. Her details are also on the news sheet. Thank you. And this is all about Easter, Easter online invite. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday and we invite you and your family to join with us to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There will be an Easter kids talk and more. Please tune in to what's happening on Easter Sunday. For Good Friday, a reflection resource will be provided. Thank you. Come on, Easter service is starting. Good morning, everyone. He's risen. What?
Matthew eighteen twenty one to 35 Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle his accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, Please be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay back the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In his anger, the master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. As I mentioned earlier, this Sunday is Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday. It begins Holy Week and is leading up to Easter. Easter and the events we celebrate are at the heart of the Christian faith. Easter is not just another weekend in a calendar of religious events. It summarizes what it is that Christians believe. We believe that Jesus died on a Roman cross. He was buried in a tomb. Jesus was dead. We believe that Jesus overcame death and appeared to people as a living and resurrected Lord. We believe that Jesus' actions were not just a moral example. He was the Son of God, made flesh to extend forgiveness and grace to all of humanity. Today, we want to understand forgiveness, both how we extend forgiveness to others and how we receive forgiveness for ourselves. The story of Hashim Garrett in Jesus the Game Changer is so powerful. Hashim was 15 years old and a member of one of the gangs of Brooklyn. He was shot in the back with a machine gun by another gang member and left a paraplegic. Plastic. Recovering in hospital after the shooting, he was depressed and dis desperate, trying to come to the term with a lifelong overcome of being unable to use his legs over again. Hashim began to read the Bible his mom had given to him, and this changed his life. One of the passages that became very important to Hashim was on forgiveness. It is where Peter asked Jesus how often he has to forgive. The context of Jesus' statement is that Peter has asked Jesus how many times he should forgive someone who has wronged him. What Jewish rabbis taught at the time was that you should forgive others three times. But on the fourth occasion, there was no forgiveness. Peter has offered to double that number plus one, offering to forgive seven times. It seemed very generous, and yet, Jesus responds, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Hesh, Hashim considered this word as a fifteen years old and said, I was doing the math. That's a lot of forgiving. Remarkably, Hashim made two decisions in response to reading the Bible. Firstly, he decided to follow Jesus to put his life and future in Jesus' hands. Secondly, he followed Jesus' call to forgive. 
Hashim had to forgive his parents for di divorcing and his stepfather for being abusive, the kid who shot him, but also Hashim came to recognize that these were not the toughest part of the forgiveness for him. He had to forgive himself for the choices he had made. Forgiveness became the starting point for a new to him, a fresh start for uh, Jesus. The story of Hashim demonstrates the release he found in forgiveness. This was not an easy one-off action, but an ongoing struggle. Hashim quoted Martin Luther King Jr., who said, forgiveness is not an occasional act, it is a constant attitude. Both this man, Hashim and Martin Luther King Jr., had a constant struggle to continue to forgive. Hashim talks about how one day he would forgive and let it go, and then in the middle of the night, all his anger, resentment, and loss would rise up again. He felt like taking it back. Forgiveness is a life choice, a value you continue to live up. It is not based on the situation, the person, or the culture. It is a daily attitude that you seek to put into practice even if you feel wronged, and even if those who brought you pain are not seeking your forgiveness. Forgiveness matters to Jesus. And he made this point in two passages. One, first one is in Matthew 6, 14 to 15. It is helpful to remember how important forgiveness was for Jesus. Jesus teaches on prayer in a section called the Sermon on the Mount, which runs from Matthew chapter 5 to chapter 7. This is a sermon Jesus gave to a large group of people on the mountainside. In the middle of this passage, Jesus teaches the listeners how to pray. Jesus is not prescribing a specific form of words for people to recite every time they pray, rather giving a template and it is significant that the Lord's Prayer includes forgiveness. And then immediately after the prayer, Jesus continues the theme, the only section of the Lord's Prayer that Jesus uh, commentates on his teaching on forgiveness. Jesus says, Matthew 6, 14, For if you forgi forgive others, uh, other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Forgiveness matters to Jesus, and he made this point in another passage in uh, Matthew 18, 21 to 35, which is our today's passage. In this passage, Jesus tries to help those listening to understand what the failure to forgive looks like from God's perspective. Jesus tells a story where a servant owes the master an outrageous amount of money and has no possibility of repaying the debt. The amount in today's terms is basically millions of dollars. And how a servant could accumulate such a debt is unbelievable. But that is the point of the parable. The amount owed is unpayable and the forgiveness of the debt is incomprehensible. The servant leaves the master after having his debt forgiven, only to meet up with a man who owes him a small amount and demands payment. This amount is tiny but not insignificant, perhaps a day's wage in those times. The debtor used exactly the same words as the first servant when he pleaded for mercy from his master. Yet this time, the plea fell on deaf ears and the servant is sent to the jail and to repay the debt. In Jesus' story, others hear of the uh, situation and complain to the master. And the servant is dragged back before the king and asked why he didn't forgive a small debt when he had been forgiven such a large debt. The question from the master to the unforgiving servant is one we all need to consider. The point of the parable is that we are no different to the servant. We have been forgiving, forgiven of an enormous debt and therefore should forgive others. I guess 
we struggle to forgive, don't we? We struggle to forgive because we underestimate the amount we have been forgiven. It is a common characteristic of the church and Christian leaders at various times to underestimate the need for humankind to experience God's forgiveness. When Paul wrote to the church at Rome, he wanted them to understand the state that every person finds themselves in. He wrote in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Paul, in another letter written to the church in Ephesus, suggests you are dead in your transgressions and sins. This means we are dead in wickedness, immorality, and that causes spiritual death in our lives towards God. In modern times, we lack the insight to understand this position. Regularly, people speak as if we are all good people going through a bad patch and Jesus may be able to help a little. If we think like that, we reflect the first servant, we show little understanding of our need for forgiveness and therefore lack the insight to appreciate the forgiveness we receive. We struggle to forgive because we are suffering deeply from our own hurt. There is a true story of a Jewish man, Simon Winstenthal, who had been a prison camp in World War II. He was asked by a dying former Nazi soldier to forgive him. This soldier had participated in the mass murder of Jewish women, children, and old men in a concentration camp. And his conscience was torturing him in his last moments on earth. So, with the help of a nurse, he sought out a Jew to whom he could confess and ask for forgiveness before he died. He said, I know that what I'm asking is almost too much for you, but without your answer, I cannot die in peace. Vincent Thu said nothing and left. Later, he questioned his behavior. Ought I have forgiven him? Was my silence at the bedside of the dying Nazi right or wrong? This is a profound moral question. Each of our lives are different, and each of us have to deal with the actions committed against us by others. There are people here today for whom forgiveness of another uh, feels impossible. You have been hurt, abused, and wounded. The scar of those wounds go deep and suggesting you forgive feels like an impossible request. In the interview with Carl Fass, Dale King, who was sexually abused by his pastor when he was you know, very young, very child, he finished the interview with these words. I know, I need to let it go. I don't know how, but I need to let it go. This is a powerful testimony about the struggle to forgive. Paula, a guest on Jesus the Game Changer, reflects on the meaning of the Greek word for forgiveness. The thing I love about the Greek for forgiveness simply means let go. It is like a balloon. You let it go and off it goes. Then also the people who need the forgiveness have to let it go as well. The significance of this story comes to each of us as we read the words of Jesus. Our most natural and usual response to the unforgiving servant is, if you were forgiven such a great debt, why don't you just extend that same forgiveness to the person who owes you? We cannot help but respond this way. The reaction of the unforgiving servant feels unjust and ungrateful. The point that Jesus is making is that if we are forgiven, that gives us the motivation to forgive others. Recognition of our forgiveness gives us the motivation and potentially the capacity to extend that forgiveness to others. Our capacity to forgive is influenced by our experience of forgiveness. This is the foundation of the message of Jesus. 
we have the opportunity to experience forgiveness that allows us the capacity to extend forgiveness. One of the key thoughts that Jesus, the game changer, would want every viewer to grasp is that the life and teaching of Jesus Christ Im impacted one person at a time. Jesus doesn't want to influence someone else right there. But Jesus wants to influence your life through the power of forgiveness and the gift of grace. God's unmerited favor on us. Here is where the change starts. You may have come to the place where you recognize your need for forgiveness and you are ready to respond to God's free gift. So, what do we do to respond to Jesus' offer of forgiveness? Each person has to make a choice to believe Jesus as a person in history who sacrificed himself on the cross to bring us from the darkness into the light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his. Following Jesus is about choosing to live a life that honors him. Jesus loves you and he knows what's the best for you. This all starts with you. A choice you make to accept Jesus' death and resurrection for yourself. Today, you have the opportunity for a fresh start in Jesus Christ. The chance to experience forgiveness and the capacity to extend forgiveness. I invite you to pray with me as a sign for your choice. This is not a magic you know, formula. This is a set of words that reflects the attitude of your heart. Are you ready to put your life into Jesus Christ? Are you looking for a fresh start? Would you like to receive the forgiveness offered by Jesus Christ? Is this your time? Please repeat this prayer after me in your heart, not, not aloud. Let these words reflect the attitude of your heart. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I thank you for the death of Jesus on my behalf. I come to you today and say I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for ignoring you in my life. I ask for your forgiveness. Today I put my life into your hands, Lord. I pray that you will fill me with your spirit. I pray for the courage to live what I say I believe. Amen. This is an end of today's online service. Uh, thank you for worshiping uh, with me. I hope to see you again on Good Friday and or Easter Sunday. If you have any question or inquiry, please send me an email at office at lpuc.org.au or contact me on 91539694. This is a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face sh to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.